Our 6.9, 9.15 a.m. item, consideration of presentation by Rural Council <coughs> Representatives of California, Senior Vice President Craig Ferguson. I'm going to pass this over to Supervisor Crandall. Yes, so uh, we have uh, Senior Vice President Craig Ferguson here with us today. Um, he's going to present the strategic plan. Um, also, uh, Craig is uh, one, of the, on one of the leads. You can come up here, Craig, yeah. Um, usually, in our meetings, usually I'm always seeing the uh, Golden State Finance Authority reports, but he covers the whole breadth of the the, the organization. But uh, yeah, we've, uh, we've I've been involved with RCRC for quite some time, and it's always a pleasure to. Uh, we're always waiting to hear what Craig has to say. So <laughs> here he is. To, he come he come to Lake County and paying us a visit to give us some good news. No, I appreciate that. <clears throat> I must uh, admit, going off to what you guys just did this morning is going to be really anticlimactic. It's <laughs> <laughs> the 4-H, all the proclamations. Um, so we do this, um, a few of us split it up, and we're trying to get to every county at least once a year just to remind you guys you are members of RCRC, and RCRC is an advocate for Lake County as well as the other 39 member counties that have since joined RCRC. RCRC was formed in um, 1972 with very few counties and has since grown. And we're now having to hold off the, the bigger counties wanting to join us. We're kind of just saying, you have CSAC, go to CSAC, or we'll stay with CSAC. But um, we've, we've gained in popularity and that's from the board to, to the staff, uh, as well as the affiliated companies. And I'll run through a few of those. And again, it's not um, going into the details of, of the strategic plan, but just to let you know we, we have one and I remind you guys that we're, we're here for you. And, you know, Lake, you know, we're not rural counties without our counties. And so the, uh, the first slide, you can just see the high level uh, strategic kind of plan, which would include equitable, equitable access. And that, that includes stuff we're working on with um, some of our affiliate uh, companies, broadband, housing, health services, and I'll touch a little on a, on a couple of those. Um, state and federal advocacy, innovative approaches, regulatory engagement, and I know our GA staff was in DC just last week, you know, walking the halls and, um, you know, focusing on, on rural California. And, um, I've, you know, you never, you never really see pushback. I don't know if they're hiding the fact, but whenever you talk about rural California, even at DC, they're very supportive. Um, but we do need to continue that voice because we don't have the population to get what we need, um, as you know. Uh, forest resiliency and wildfire, we've uh, recently jumped on, um, and I'll touch on that with the, uh, the biomass company we're working with. Uh, water resiliency, always an issue, um, economic development, and then just the operational excellence of running a company, human resources, member services, all the way down to, to technology. Um, I'll jump on the next one. And uh, just to, to, to cover again on the state and federal advocacy side with uh, RCRC, uh, the state uh, policy areas, we're talking forest health, wildfire, care court, which is always a, a bit of a, you know, a tender subject, but quite a few of our supervisors I've seen. Uh, water drought, broadband housing, energy, uh, social services, and even the CPUC. We're working a lot with the CPUC and uh, several initiatives um, that, that, that we're working with. And then, of course, on the federal side, again, forest health, wildfire, water drought. Um, and then you can just see the PG&E uh, working group thing we're working on and the property insurance ad hoc committee that we have. And you can jump to the next one. I'm going to try not to take too much time here. Supervisor Crane was saying that sometimes he's here till six, seven at night. Sounds awful. <laughs> um, one of the affiliates, Golden State Finance Authority, RCRC, uh, uh, started this up in 93. We're just celebrating our 30th anniversary. I'm not sure if uh, some of you who are at the annual uh, conference saw the video, the 30th anniversary. Um, we've got several housing-related programs. We've got one specifically for uh, firefighters, teachers, policemen. Um, we've got uh, health workers, too. Uh, we cover the entire state, so RCRC is made up of 40 rural counties. Golden State Finance Authority has the same member counties, same board members, but we also have associate member counties that don't have a vote on the board, but we cover the, in the entire state. We're um, 
56 of the 58 counties and over 300 cities are part of the Golden State um, uh, network. And as you can see, we've um, assisted uh, over 85,000 families, uh, over 15.7 billion in loan financing, provided over 665 million in down payment assistance. And that was the niche, was down payment assistance. You, you, know, you, you can qualify for a home, but you don't have that money to, to put down. And uh, that's where uh, Golden State Finance Authority has, has been providing most the worth for, for, for its existence until we started uh, diversifying into energy and, and, and other aspects. And you can do the next one, thanks. Uh, we have another entity, uh, National Home Buyers Fund. With this company, we actually go national and we do the very similar things with down payment assistance. And um, that's been in existence since 2002. And as you can see, we've assisted uh, over 47,000 families, 9.6 billion and uh, over 422 million in down payment assistance. And National Home Buyers Fund also covers California. So we technically got two California entities and then this one goes national. Um, you can jump to the next one if you want. And as you can see, recently we actually started a program we call the Assist Your Own Program. And this is for member county employees. This is, is uh, assistance up to 5.5% either with a 0% second or, and or with a gift tied to it to cover that down payment assistance. And this was developed uh, in part, um, mostly actually, our current CEO was uh, CAO of Yolo County and he, he came with this you know, thought of why don't we do something for county employees to try and retain our employees or bring employees over to the county. And so we put this together and um, just a little over a year ago, and there's now 54 employees that have purchased through this uh, program. And, and again, it's just, uh, it, it's, it's better uh, rates and down payment assistance that you're gonna find out there. So it's specifically to uh, uh, the uh, county employees, and we're really coming out of, uh, we're coming at, we, the funds are coming out of our own pocket. Um, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, next. So this is a, a newer um, entity that we've started. It's also a joint powers authority, very similar to Golden State Finance Authority, same 40 board members. And this is to bring uh, open access fiber broadband into rural California. And I think we all saw what happened during COVID where rural California, which I learned is worse than you know most places in the country. And you think being close to the fourth largest economy in the world, you'd get the uh, the internet sorted out. Um, but we're focusing on bringing open access, which means we're gonna build, operate, own the fiber in the ground, and we're talking fiber, not cable, and we're gonna, when I say open access, it's open to the internet service providers, and that could be at and it could be Monkey Brains, it could be Comcast, but we're the owners, you can provide the service, and, it, and what that does is, is provides competition for the consumers, and uh, they can pick and choose who they want to use. I'm in Sacramento. I've got one choice, and it's Comcast. Um, we, have, we have partnered with an entity out of Utah. We've been working with them for, for about three years now, and they're also a government entity, and they do this in Utah. So they're going to do it for us. We're not experts at this, but they're going to do it for us, and they've already got 65,000 subscribers through their network in Utah, and it's uh, the fastest internet you can get, and... Um, highly popular and the CPUC has known about them and they are putting funds aside. We're still in discussion with this part of the, uh, the grant funding that came from the feds where we've, we've designed a loan loss reserve and we're going to go out into the investment banking world. They're going to pay for the building. If there's a shortfall with revenues, that's where the loan loss reserve comes in. And we kind of just use that. If you've got a hundred percent guarantee, the investors are out there we're going to you know, it's going to be kind of a public-private partnership. The private builds uh, with their money, and then we can back it should there be any shortfall. Utah hasn't had a shortfall in the six years. They've issued over $600 million in debt to, to build this, uh, this five. Um, you can jump to the next one. Thanks. And this is just a little further on, on Golden State Connect. We, you know, we've, um, we're getting... Uh, grant funding. In fact, Golden State Finance Authority is funding it up front, and then when the counties get the funds, the money's coming back to us, but it allows the counties to put their engineering plans together. And you can see out of all the blue ones, that's all the RCRC members participating. 
and then the other counties have already have their own plans in place, but uh, can definitely join in with our own network. And then this is an old dormant company, but we've raised it from the dead, and it's going to be more of an educational, um, uh, academic research, uh, bring the politicians to rural California and show them what we've got going on. And so uh, National Home Buyers Fund has put some money to, to this uh, um, entity to, to get it going, and then PG&E also put um, you know, some, some funds aside to, uh, to help fund this and then get, get the initial um, uh, academic educational tours sorted out. I think the first tour is slated for um, Mariposa County, uh, but then we'll just take it from there. Next slide, please. And then this is the biomass entity. It's really a um, forest resiliency effort. And a few years ago, we got into a 20-year uh, master stewardship agreement with the U.S. Forest Service, which owns most of the forests in California. And the idea is to let us get in there, pull out all this dead wood, and we can do something with it. And the idea initially and still is um, the Europe really likes pellets. And for some reason, they like California wood. And, um, and Japan's big in it. Everyone's getting away from nuclear. Right now, with the Russia-Ukraine thing going on, there's very, uh, there's, there's very little fuel getting passed through Europe. And so that's even been more helpful for, the, for the, um, the, the growth of this. Right now, we're in an environmental review. We'll probably go through um, hopefully just first, um, first quarter of 2024. We were in talks with uh, uh, equity investors, with uh, takeout providers, with uh, investment banking firms. We've already signed NDAs with all of them. Seems to be a lot of excitement. We just got to get through the environmental mess, which is, um, we, thank goodness we have a general counsel who's really good at that, and Arthur Wileen is working his, his tail off um, with, with this. But another exciting um, aspect of, you know, you, you, you have Golden State Finance Authority, and through the years, it's, it's uh, produce quite a decent amount of revenue for RCRC as well as for itself and funding these entities, getting this entity started. Um, Golden State uh, put $10 million into this company to get it going and, um, and uh, also was funding the grants for the, uh, for the uh, broadband company. So it's exciting work that we're doing, not just focusing on what the mothership was of housing. It's, it's, it's a lot of other helpful to California issues. Uh, next one, please. And then uh, this one's an old one. Uh, it's growing. I'm not sure if Lake County is part of the ES. We are. Yes. Uh, good. Yeah. And um, so this is more of the uh, you know public education, uh, administering grants uh, for recycling and hazardous waste. It's been around probably since '93 as well, and it just kind of focuses more on environmental issues and uh, supporting the member counties with um, with with hazardous waste and, and, and managing programs and what have you. I think that's it. I see what the, yeah, look at that. Craig, <laughs> can you talk about um, the grants that were just applied for this week for broadband or so, last week? It, it, and I'm, I'm not hands deep in it, but there was a lot of work going into uh, what you call uh, the FFA uh, grants. And so this is federal funds that's gonna come in through uh, the CPUC and CPUC, as I said, are actually very supportive of us. And so, when we when when we issue debt to build, um, there's going to be a shortfall because we've got to meet the debt service. That means you guys all have internet, but it's going to cost 10 million to build it, and your payments aren't going to help support that 10 million. You're going to, you know, maybe cover. <coughs> So we need to cover that shortfall in order to build, and that's what these grants are going to do. And they've. Um, They've, they've spent hours and hours, and this is Barbara and Eric and um, uh, at our office, because uh, it, it, it's very detailed, you know, per grant request. But in the end, we're going to be requesting over 800 million um, in grant funds. Are we going to get it? I don't know. But even if we got half of that, we could do some we could do some damage with uh, tying that to uh, the bond funding. Then we're working with the loan loss reserve, and we could. Without question, RCRC as the <coughs> could have the best um, uh, built internet in California, because traditionally the, the incumbents, AT and T's and Verizon's, all that, they go get this money. They light up one house, and they said we lit up 
and CPUC has finally, you know, come to clues about, yeah, guys, you haven't done anything for years. So they, they, they're more excited about what we're doing. Well, that's the equity piece that's been missing with um, the big providers is they have told us over and over again, they're not going to invest here because it's never going to be profitable. Right. But then they shouldn't go ask for state funds. Exactly. Whole, uh, right. So I really appreciate RCRC's advocacy in this, make sure, making sure that we get access to all the coverage that we're entitled to. And it's, it's, it's fun work. It's, it's, it's exciting. And, and the board is so supportive of it. Um, and, you know, it's, let's see it come to fruition. The policy advocates and the staff are always hand in hand with our admin as well. And they'll be quick to remind us if something's coming across the pike. Um, like, for example, the Golden State Connect Authority. Um, we, as you see, we were on the map for the uh, uh, technical assistance and our plan being in place. Um, and a lot of times, uh, we, we always talk about grant fatigue and things like that. Well, with RCRC, we were able to uh, collaborate with others and apply for these um, fun this funding sources and also have the assistance from their staff, so. Supervisor Swatia. Thank you very much um, for the presentation. And uh, RCRC, uh, I, I appreciate the focus. Uh, the conversation, in my opinion, seems so much more relevant when you go to those meetings because of what we experience here in Lake County. Uh, so I appreciate that you are here to advocate for rural needs. I uh, just wanted to mention a couple of things. You mentioned the ESJ with recycling. Um, I know that we're doing things here internally for the redemption of recycling. I just want to stress how much of, much of a mess it is in the state of California to the point that now our state governor is borrowing money from that budget because nobody's doing redemption. It just seems kind of ridiculous. So I hope that we can continue the advocacy to resolve some of those issues. Uh, but there's just no money left in it, so nobody's wanting to be involved. Uh, again, we do have a local fix that we're working on, um, but it shouldn't have to come to that with threats of uh, fines that are coming to our uh, agency. So hopefully those conversations continue. Uh, I know that uh, Michael Day and RCRC were working on something a while ago and I hope it comes back, and that was the SGIP, um, where um, you were, uh, as RCRC, going to collect some of the SGIP from the state of California to help pay for low-income um, uh, ability to get uh, battery backup and things like that, especially for PSPS. I hope that's something that we're continuing to advocate to have that program come back uh, so that RCRC can actually uh, do what they were planning to do before it disappeared to seasonal homes in Marin County, which was not the intent of what SGIP was for. So um, it still exists, and that, that funding started with when we, we, uh, we did a program with the California Energy Commission back in 2010, we actually put a full home retrofit program together uh, with 0% second, uh, I mean, 0% uh, loans. And uh, if, if it was member counties, and then 3% loans, it was non-member counties. And it was about 33 million that uh, came via the feds to the CEC. We'd never been in energy before, but we decided why not? And that's when we started working with Michael Day. and. Um, and we got the 33 million, and it was such a popular product that it disappeared. And then, since then, we got into the PACE world, and we've done over a billion in whole, whole home retrofits with, uh, with the PACE program, both commercial and residential. Um, but then we went back to the SEC because the payments on the loans coming back in, the principal, and uh, if it had interest, interest coming back, comes back to an account we, we sit on, but we don't own the money. So... We saw the SGIP program via the CPUC. We went to, to the CC and say, you guys don't even know how to take your own money back. Can we just use it for this? It'll make you look good. It makes us look good. It makes the CPUC look good. But they only allowed us $3 million out of the six that we're sitting on for some, I don't know, uh, bylaw or statute they got internally. So that money's been revolved. So, and it revolves pretty quickly. We'll do the upfront to the contractor on, on the borrower's behalf. Average is 25000 uh, we get the rebate back. That goes back in the pot and it keeps going. So it, it's definitely it's, going. So it is still there. Yeah. Okay. So my last conversation with Michael Day was that it was no, there was no more money available. No, so it's, it's just recycling. I wish we could grow it. We're talking to the CEC to increase it to five. Our board, in fact, approved 
um, up to three million of our, of our own money to throw in there. I'm just holding back on that right now because we've got too many other commitments and if we're going to get the CEC to throw state money in there because it's not ours and we can make this program work. And it's, it's done pretty well. The, uh, the, the three million has, well, it's, it's revolved into in, you know, a lot of millions. If, in, you, if you can set us some information on uh, how to access that program, that would be oh, great. With that question, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. And then uh, you had the national home buyers for employees. Uh, is that only accessible through employees or is that accessible to the counties as well? So the assist to own program for county employees, is that what you're talking about? And um, it, it's, it's the Golden State Finance Authority program. National Home Buyers Fund kind of does the admin. It's really, we're all the same team, but it's, it's a way to, you know, National Home Buyers Fund is is um, not a public entity like Golden State Finance Authority, so it's easy enough to move money from NHF to RCRC, because technically RCRC owns all the resources of NHF. So that's why their name is on it, but really it's Golden State Finance Authority program. But your question, is it only available to... The employees, or does it go, can the employer access those funds as well? Just because some of our problem is bringing people here, there's no housing to rent or buy. If we can maybe work with RCRC to help create a stock that can be a revolving door for new incoming employees, because um, we've had employees stay in hotels for months sometimes or stay out of county because they couldn't find anything. Uh, just curious if there's any access to the counties. Um, I mean, talking about providing more homes, that's a tough one because that's been going on in rural California in general. And we're hoping to see just more development. It just comes back to the who's gonna invest when, you know, kind of like the AT&Ts, they don't wanna come out because there's no revenues to be made. But, you know, rural California is definitely um, increasing in, in population. I mean, you saw what happened in COVID, everyone left the suburbs yeah. and, you know, then you definitely ran out of, out of housing. Um, but um, if I am understanding, it's open to, I mean, an employer would be a county employee too, right? I mean, you're, you're we, we've had actually like last year, we had a, a meeting online and, and invited the employees to, you know, to be a part of that meeting and see if they would you want to take advantage of the uh, employee home buyers uh, program. But I don't I think you're asking what are you asking? If, I'm if the agency of Lake County can access so some Lake of those County funds as a government. Create, access. Yeah. OK. All right. I'm mean, we can tweak it. We we own the program and it could be something to you know, because the, the problem with what you said earlier, I mean, you try and find a home in Alpine County or Mono County or anything, there's nothing. It's, it's you know, it's, um, it's tough, but we want to see it work. And the last thing is uh, for my colleagues, and I'm glad that we have a fire chief here. I know in uh, all the meetings I go to, I hear about the rural reimbursement for EMS services uh, in the amount of time it takes to bring a patient over the hills and back. The reimbursement doesn't pay back. And there's, I, I, I don't know if it's the technical term, but it's a super rural reimbursement that they're looking for. We're not rural enough, but yet... We're, we're losing money on uh, providing those services. If there's a way um, to advocate for some of those changes so that we can make sure that uh, with the work that we do to ensure the health and safety of patients coming from our hospitals, uh, that we can get that better reimbursement rate, um, that would help us out a whole lot. And I don't know if the chief wants to speak to that because I'm sure he knows a whole lot more th about it than I do, uh, but I know it's something that I'm uh, looking to advocate for on the national level as well. And uh, so understand, it's, it's the between, it's, it's costing the county and the time to get the money rebated is the gap? The, the amount that we get reimbursed oh, for the, compared to the actual no, cost, right. uh, there's different level tiers of reimbursement and one of them is super rural, then rural, and then probably suburban and urban. And we're, we're, the amount that we receive for rural doesn't cover it, but if we can somehow get ourselves into the super rural tier, that would be very advantageous to make sure that our EMS and fire districts can continue to provide the services that they do. So just, just uh, something that I'm advocating oh, no, for, I wanted to speak up to, to it. Up at the, at the RC RC uh, next board meeting just as a as a, you know where, uh, for for a county concerns mm -hmm. that'd be okay something more fun than most of the ones I hear <laughs> <laughs> thank you uh, vice chair Simon 
Yeah, um, thank you for the report today. Obviously, and, and thank you, EJ, and you know, um, you know, always attending the meetings and, and bringing the message from Lake County. But uh, one on your uh, electrification opportunities right now for charging stations, fueling stations. We're in the rural county, obviously, before, but. We're going to have a lot more electric cars here before we have broadband here and that's the reality of it um and looking to make sure that we're really concentrating on the rural counties getting those opportunities as we're moving forward especially here in lake county being we're right between 101 and 5. it's a cut across a lot of ways but not many charging stations or electric charge you know large electric charging stations those types of things uh, for our rural community members uh, the individuals that live here that are on low income uh, but also just for the infrastructure needs as we're moving forward. Um, like I said, we got a lot more electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles coming into the county um, and, and making sure that Lake County or rural counties, uh, specifically the Lake County, uh, don't miss out on those opportunities as they're coming through. I know our public services are concentrating on those things, but carrying those messages back through RCRC that we, we really get the opportunity in rural uh, counties in California uh, to take advantage of it because I think that's where it's going to be the most impactful because uh, everybody's going to the hybrid vehicles that we have those opportunities and not only just to have the opportunity but also for economic development opportunities as we're moving forward. A lot of rural communities are looking you know not to build any more fossil fuel stations starting to happen uh, and so that next economic development opportunity for someone who has a fueling station to get an electrical uh, charging station set up uh, in the new uh, era of hybrid vehicles. So anyway, I just want to make sure always talking about that as we're moving through into the it's, new future by 2035. It's, it's, a, it's a big issue and the word tested just threw up throughout 350,000 new cars just this quarter. Um, but at least they're doing a huge effort on building their own. But yeah, we have a team, part of the, our economic development team where that is a big focus. And, and we, uh, we, we are talking to entities that see it as a big focus. And again, it comes, how do you fund it? And as uh, you know, you just need to find a funding source and those electric car manufacturers need to know this because if they wanna get their cars out here, they need to start putting some cash down and you know, whether it's at, you know, apartments don't really work too well for that, but well, gas stations for that matter, because you don't wanna sit there for 45 minutes at a gas station, but you know, the Walmarts and the shopping areas and places where you can actually charge a car and go do stuff for an hour, that works and that's what we're focusing on. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I agree with you and we, we, it is part of our services focus right now too. Supervisor Green. Yeah, I, I apologize if I'm off, off topic, but I'm still playing catch up to the, the whole Potter Valley thing. So the slide that caught my eye was the PG&E working group, and I don't know if it's a question or you or, or, or my colleagues, but um, uh, other counties and other parts of the project area are already working directly with PG&E, uh, at least in terms of some property negotiations. I'm wondering if we either already have uh, co direct contact with pg &E, pg e on the Potter Valley issue through other venues like the Russian River Water Forum or if there's an opportunity or if work is already being done with this pg e working group to really put Lake County and pg e in the same room together, maybe with some other stakeholders. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I don't want to be disrespectful to the Russian River process, whatever that's turning into, but uh, I saw a, a target of opportunity, possible opportunity here with the pg e working group if we're not already engaged directly with that utility. I can answer that, so when you're ready. Thank you. This PG&E working group that we have over at RCRC is just for wildfire, um, and we, we only talk about that in, in that forum. So yeah. the, other, the other things that you're mentioning aren't brought up there because there's also, when we go to RCRC in general, you have Humboldt County, Mendocino County, Sonoma County, so it wouldn't make sense for Lake County to try and have RCRC advocate for our needs in the midst of a group of with have different opposing needs, if that makes sense. But we all can get on the same page with wildfire. So we only talk about those things there. Well, just, PSPS, just, just, yeah. just the suggestion, you know, the, the history of PG&E and hydro spans the entire state. It, we haven't necessarily connected the dots, but it's, it's possible there's other decommissioning uh, proposals in other counties that they may be struggling with themselves. So I, I get that the initial thrust of the working group may well indeed be uh, wildfire, but um, 
Potter Valley is probably not the only project that's getting this kind of scrutiny and uh, might just be worth asking around. So I, um, I remember when Pat came in 2021 and I asked him what RCRC was doing about tree mortality and he just looked at me and said, tree mortality is back. <laughs> and since then, RCRC staff has been incredibly supportive as we've been working through a very, very long process to try and get support for our project. So I just, I really want to give um, big kudos to Stacy um, and Pat for helping with that. And also um, the pg and &E work group, it's monthly. Um, Supervisor Crandall and I kind of meet whenever we can. And last month, yeah, last month we were there together really frustrating at this point that we're having the same conversations that we've been having for the last several years. But it is a way for us to sit down directly with PG&E's leadership and talk about, um, you know, the issues that we continue to have, particularly around vegetation management and Woodhall. So I just, I want to put both of those out there. I'm really thankful for that support. Um, and then also, however we can support the CPUC um, workshops and getting the coverage that we need to have in, in, in across um, our county, rural counties just like us that don't have um, cellular service, broadband, and um, we obviously don't want to see the decommissioning of our plain old telephone lines right. either. So thank you for that. I want to open it up for public comment if there's anyone in the room. Again, this is around on the RCRC strategic plan. Elaine Brown, educator. Uh, I'd just like to speak to broadband and uh, what is my motivation? You know, people probably wonder. I don't like getting up and speaking, obviously, but no one is on this subject. And um, I, I, I go to a, a Bible verse that says, speak up for those who can't speak up for themselves. And the bees may be affected by broadband. I'd like to see. So what this is in that. about the strategic plan. Thank you for letting me talk. And it's not about broadband. Um, it's about that's part of the strategic band is getting more broad yes, um, yes. band, which we need to research to see if that's affecting the bees. I know 40 billion with a B birds are going missing in North America. And that maybe needs to be researched if that broadband the networks, if it's affecting birds. Um, pellet stoves, check Mendocino County, they're burning um, wood at a fast rate, causing pollution in this county. Um, also, I haven't seen a lot of fruit flies. I know I'm old and used to see fruit flies all the time. I never see fruit flies anymore again. Could be broadband. I know bees are affected by our frequencies. Um, Homes. I've been told by a, a, a respected politician in this area that there's many homes that are um, in this area, hundreds, that have tax issues on them, and we just need to get that going. Hey, so not on topic. Have, not that's on about topic. the homes that you're talking about. No, about, you mentioned no, about are there homes no, for people that no. work for the county? That is a that's I would a like home that financing program. I would still I like that to, to be. I need you to stay on topic and be stop, respectful please. of our. I would still agenda. like to be um, that, to be on record. Thank you. Okay. And um, electricity. We want to go all electric, but we have hear of EMPs. If that goes on, then we're stuck without being able to move. Gas is freedom. Cash is freedom. I'd like to see gas as still an option in this state because if, as we've heard, we are attacked in that manner, we are at a standstill with Tesla okay, cars. I, thank again, you. And you're getting off topic. Okay, thank you. And I know pellets were brought up. Um, the whole reason why uh, Japan and Europe want the pellets are due to the fact that they're more uh, environmentally friendly than coal. And so um, I know pellet, it was stated that pellets cause pollution, but that, that's what's been presented in these um, presentations that we've had. I don't know if uh, you can confirm that with me, Craig, but. No, and Europe is, uh, has always been a very large coal user. In fact, Poland right now uh, is very, very interested in, in, in pellets, and they want to move completely away from coal because you're right, it is a, um, it is a dirtier burning entity. Um, yeah. The, ho the whole idea, again, is forest resiliency. It's not really about us becoming a producer. It's more about getting the dead wood out. And it's, me it's really more of a fire 
uh, right. retardant type thing because that's that's the fuel that burns the the forest down. It just lies there, you know, and no one lets us go in there because, you know, uh, just environmental reasons. Yeah, biomass continues to be a huge threat for all of our rural counties. We're trying to figure out how we do all of our fuel maintenance and then what do we do with what's left over. Mentioning tree mortality, we have 20,000 trees identified in our project. What are we gonna do with those $20,000 or 20,000 trees? So appreciate that RCRC is working on a, on a pilot program like this. Um, we're gonna be looking at some for our county. So it's just, we all have to be thinking, what can we do with this resource that we have that seems unlimited, that's never really gonna go away, and how can we use it to um, be more sustainable as we go forward? Any other public input? Anyone in the chambers or anyone in the Zoom, Zoom room? Okay, thanks. Do we have any last comments or questions or anything for Craig? Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it, thank I you. really appreciate our annual updates from RCRC and um, it was a great annual meeting this year. It was, it was good. It was yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.